king of curses, the disgraced one. Jujutsu Kaisen should be observed to have labeled its first chapter, not of its protagonist, but of its antagonist, Ryomen Sukuna. The entire story, and so to different degrees, all characters, orb around him and his impact upon the world. Not Itadori, the main character, not Megumi, the pupil and the greatest potential, and not even Satoru Gojo, the honored one. What makes Sukuna so unique among all others, so compelling, so oppressive in his presence? Simply because he is the strongest. He is the Ubermensch. What does the term Ubermensch mean? Well, it comes from the famous philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche's book, Thus Spoke Zarathustra. Written in the wake of the so-called Enlightenment, a period where faith wavered away on a mass scale in exchange for rationalism, God and subsequently his divine rules which shaped human morality was considered dead. And so a terrifying void in the human framework was made. It used to be God that gave life in all things meaning, values, a purpose. But now nihilism reigned. Nothing truly mattered. Nothing had a purpose or inherent value. Morality became a mere arbitrary social construct. And make no mistake, this was far from a good thing in the mind of Nietzsche. It was an awful, apocalyptic thought. And so he labored to find a solution. His solution was a new path for humanity in the absence of God. In this book, the character Zarathustra speaks of the Ubermensch, which can be translated to Overman or Superman. This Zarathustra proclaims the will of the Ubermensch is to give meaning to life on earth, and he admonishes his audience to ignore those who promise otherworldly fulfillments that draw them away from the material earth. Essentially, the Overman was true to his name. He was over everything and everyone, bound by no other code, law, morality, or philosophy. He and he alone determined what was valuable and good. The overman himself gave purpose to life. Because God was dead, man would have to become God. And for, forgive my pronunciation, Rudiger Safransky, the ubermensch represents a higher biological type reached through artificial selection. And at the same time, is also an ideal for anyone who is creative and strong enough to master the whole spectrum of human potential, good and evil, to become a, quote, artist tyrant. Safransky argues that the combination of ruthless warrior pride and artistic brilliance that defined the Italian Renaissance embodied the sense of the Ubermensch for Nietzsche. Sukuna is the Ubermensch of the JJK world, a near divine figure of unparalleled strength, skill, and artistry. He was never bound by any sense of morality and did whatever pleased him. Murder, 
fornication, cannibalism, torture, possession. In other terms, there are no sins to which he is held accountable to, for sins are that which brings him displeasure, things like weakness, presumption, and arrogance. There is no right or wrong to the king of curses, only the whims of his desires. The world bows to him. He is a man who has overcame all with his unquenchable desire. He burned all things down, and that is why he became the strongest. He admonished Jugo that he should have done the same if he wanted this kind of victory. Sukuna's strength is that of a ravenous beast, an all-consuming god or demon. But it is also a work of beauty, so elegant and awe-inspiring, very fitting for a technique involving the aesthetic of blades. He wields both the fangs of a beast as well as the brush of a painter, constantly adapting, constantly evolving, precise and yet indiscriminate. Sukuna is the strongest. He did so, like I said, by consuming all others and abandoning his humanity, very literally by enshrining his soul into cursed objects. And because of this, he is alone, completely and utterly. Because he is over all, there is none that can stand by his side. He knows not what love is. This is something I think most people may have missed in the importance of his fight versus Gojo. Gojo was never going to win. Because Gojo, when faced with the same path as Sukuna, chose humanity instead. He chose camaraderie, trust, cooperation, egalitarianism, faith. And most importantly, he chose love. Unlike in most shonen, however, these things do not give you a power-up in JJK. They are presented as a weakness in the pursuit of power. Every character that chooses to live for another suffers terribly. Every character that chooses to live for themselves gets away with it, at least temporarily. Nanami is murdered while dreaming of where he wished he could have vacationed while Mei Mei lounges there after abandoning Shibuya to die. This is a prime example. It's such a cruel joke of justice, but remember, justice does not exist in a world where God is dead. That is the cruel Nietzschean world of JJK. Gojo wanted to prove Sukuna wrong. He wanted to share his life with Sukuna in the only way such a man so far gone could understand, and that's by also being the strongest. Gojo tried to share that love, and in the end, though he failed, I believe he touched Sukuna in an unquestionable way. You may think I'm reaching, but let's read Gojo's words now through this new lens I presented. I do feel a bit sorry for him though. I can empathize with the magnitude of his sheer solitude more than anyone else. I love everyone and I don't feel lonely now. But somewhere along the way, there was a line I drew, not as a human, but as a living creature. You can make a flower bloom, you can admire it, but you can't tell that flower, I want you to understand me. The skills I drilled into this tempered body of mine my refined senses, even my haphazard tactics and explosive power. I gave it my all. I wanted to convey everything to Sukuna. I wanted him to know the absolute strongest, the loneliness that follows, the one who will teach you about love is, it was fun, but Sukuna wasn't able to give it his all for that, I'm sorry. I will never forget you as long as I live. In these words, a connection has been forged. One could even say a curse. 
Sukuna may no longer be the Overman, bound by nothing, for he is now bound by the memory of Satoru Gojo, or perhaps is a mere sentiment. It's hard to say where Gege will take Sukuna, but it's clear that his resolution is the crux of JJK's thematic purpose. It all started with him. While Gojo is a kindred soul, Sukuna's true foil is Itadori Yuji. Yuji is the exact opposite of Sukuna. He's the one of the very few characters in the entire series that has a strong sense of right and wrong, of justice, compassion, mercy, empathy, of self-denial, self-sacrifice. Yuji is a man that operates under the will of God, so to say. Perhaps the only one left in JJK. So we will see how Gege reconciles these two contradictory philosophies come soon. Will the Ubermensch remain? Man becomes his own god? Or will man be humbled and be forced to submit to a divine rule? But with all that said, tell me what you think. Is Sukuna the strongest? Does his philosophy ring true, or is it hollow? I'd love to hear your thoughts, but that's all I've got right now. See you next time.